And if you threw a party, he invited everyone you knew. You might see the biggest gift would be from me, and the car on it would say, Thank you for being a. Oh, the music cut out. Okay, welcome to Scrod Pod, episode 17 of the second season. This is Perfect Psyker coming to you from Hydra HQ, which is what I call my desk at Cobra Command. It was a special shout out to my friend $2 over there at r slash scrod. Thank you for being my friend, $2. And speaking of $2 and scrod, let's just take a look here. Oh, look at that. He posted an open discussion on the 74th day of March. That's so nice of him. Let's see here. Oh, 1922. B. Arthur was born. Imagine that. Happy birthday, B. Arthur, from, you know, beyond. She has long. She has passed away many years ago. Uh, B. was $2's favorite actress in the show Golden Girls. I was more of a Betty White person myself. I did like Estelle Getty as well. But what do you do? $2 likes who he likes. So happy birthday, B. Arthur. Next, we have in 1927, director Herbert Ross from Footloose. Footloose, kick off your Sunday shoes. Yes, your Sunday shoes. Because we all have shoes just for Sunday. What the hell does that mean? I only have shoes that I wear to work. I have work boots. Then I have running shoes. And then I have hiking shoes. But I don't have Sunday shoes. So tell me, Director Herbert Ross, what are... Wait, I guess it was Kenny Loggins. Never mind. Never mind. Has nothing to do with you, Herbert. That was Kenny Loggins. Happy birthday, Herb. 1939, Harvey Keitel, that old reservoir dog. He has a birthday today. We all remember Harvey as Mr. White or the wolf in Pulp Fiction or the bad lieutenant. But does anyone else remember that he did play the gypsy in Monkey Trouble back in the 90s? Anybody? Am I the only one that saw that movie? Well, he did. But happy birthday to you, Harvey. Uh, We also have Zoe Wanamaker. Not sure who that is. It says here, Harry Potter and the SS was born. And it says, I'd pay to see HP fight Nazis. All right, let's figure this out. He's got some codes here. Harry Potter and the SS. Would that be Philosopher's Stone? No. Uh, there was some sort of cup. There was an order of a phoenix. There were, um, SS. I have no idea what that means. And then I'd pay to see HP. Oh, HP. Hewlett Packard, fight Nazis. Not sure what that has to do with anything. All right, $2 has gone crazy. 1950, director Joe Johnson had a birthday, or he was born. He has a birthday today. Uh, Joe Johnson from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and The Rocketeer and most of the stuff that I watched when I was growing up, which was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and The Rocketeer, to be honest. I think he also did the original Jumanji, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have some, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I also remember he did the movie that my uh, daughter really liked, um, that new Nutcracker one that came out. I was, like, excited. I was like, oh, it's a Joe Johnson movie. All right, I'll take you to this. And it was terrible. It was horrible. Anyways, he has on here uh, Catapa. And jip, uh, I don't know, C A T F A, and then J P I I I. I don't know. I know he was in Captain America: The First Avenger, or he directed Captain America: The First Avenger. I really enjoyed that. It had the feel of the Rocketeer, and then uh, he also did uh, Jurassic Park Three. He also has on here uh, that October Sky, and I always confuse October Sky. Is that the Jake Gyllenhaal movie? 
with October in the title, or is it the Keanu Reeves movie with October in the title, or is it the Jake Gyllenhaal movie with November in the title, or the Keanu Reeves movie with November in the title? I don't know. Those two movies were always on. They were always available to rent when I went to Blockbuster. Blockbuster. That's a place where people go to get rent movies back in the 90s. They were always on the shelf there for rent. Nobody ever rented them. Uh, so I can't remember. I, I think October Sky is the Jake Gyllenhaal staring longingly up into the sky. But I could be wrong. Also on this day in 1950, Stevie Wonder was signed, sealed, and delivered. Get it? Delivered? 1950. Stevie Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. We have 1956. Some Fred guy, I don't know. We got a Mark and an Eloise. Eloise says Weekend at Bernie's. I watched that movie a lot, so I probably do know her. Friday Night Lights. I don't know if it's a movie or the TV show. Either one. I've seen them both. And Sin City. Ad. Okay. Whatever. I don't know if that's a sequel or not. can't remember if the first one had a uh, subtitle or not. It would be a dame to kill for, is what that would stand for. I'm not sure if that's a sequel or not, or the original. If it was the original, I've seen it. Sequel, I have not. Francis Barber. Francis, the name that we heard a million times in the Deadpool movie. Um, Silibon Fallen Hogan. She's the one that said... Um, oh, Vincent D'Onofrio, you know, was talking about him, saying it was like he was wearing an Edgar suit, that guy in Men in Black, or that girl, lady, woman, woman in Men in Black. Got confused because his word man was in the title and the word black. Also, 1961, Dennis Rodman was born. Dennis Rodman, we all know him as the... Fan favorite of the dictator, Kim Jong-un. I believe that's the right one. Or Kim Jong-il. One of the Kim Johns. And he played with the Detroit Pistons and the Chicago Bulls in the NBA. That stands for National Basketball Association. That used to be a thing um, back in the day. Uh, like, like, back in... Like even early, like 2020, there was a thing called the National Basketball Association, and that's when uh, people would go out and play basketball professionally. And basketball is a sport where uh, sports are uh, these activities that people would do in groups. Or they can do single sports. They could do them as teams. This one was a team sport. And what it is, there's like a, an orange leather ball, and you would try to shoot it, not with like a weapon or something, but like with your hands, and up into this basket with this net, uh, this white mesh net. Um, the basket was about 10 feet off the, off the ground. It had a, a backboard on there, so you could hit the backboard and bounce it into, through the net, through the hoop and then the net. And then uh, you would have to, to move around on the court. Oh, it was played on a court. And to move around on it, you had to dribble, which was bounce the ball with your hand. And if you stopped bouncing the ball, you couldn't do anything else. You had to either pass it, which is to toss it to another one of your players, or shoot it, which was to, you know, use your hands to push the ball out of, uh, up into the air and down through the hoop in the net. And that is basketball. It was a sport that they played in the National Basketball Association in early 2020 and before and, and you know many years before that as well um it was it was a lot of fun and and it was a good sport uh and then this guy got uh COVID-19 and then he touched all the microphones and everything shut down thanks guy thanks wish I could remember that player's name it would have made that way better uh, let's see here. Uh, Gary Cooper also died in 1961. Gary Cooper, he was the original Longfellow Deeds. Um, I've never actually seen those movies, but I know that he was Longfellow Deeds. I've only seen the Adam Sandler version, which I enjoyed. That Mr. Deeds. 
uh, we have 1964, Stephen Colbert, or Colbert, was born, and Tom Verica. Stephen Colbert, I have his book, I Am America, and So Are You, or So Should You, something like that. Um, I also loved the Colbert Report when it was on after The Daily Show. It was like the greatest one-two punch of night uh, news, fake news comedy, uh, The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. And then uh, he moved to the, the, a late show, and I didn't really watch it, but I've been watching his home version, and his, you know, he, he just, all he really does is do a, a Trump impression the entire time, which is great. Um, it's been fun, though, because like, you watch him, and all of a sudden the dog comes into the camera, and he's like just there. The home shows are kind of fun. I, he, I only really watch him. I watch a little bit of Conan's, too, um, but yeah, I watch the clips on YouTube. Anywho, keeping it going, we have, uh, I was going to skip a bunch of these because we're running long and I don't know most of these names. Uh, we have uh, Samantha Morton who plays Alpha on Twitter. Don't know what that Twitter is. Twood. Is that like a fancy way of saying Twitter? T-W-D? Twitter. Anyway, uh, we have uh, someone from the Big Bang Theory had a birthday. We have someone from Got having a birthday. Whatever Got is. We have... Robert Pattinson. Actually, his name's Robert Pattinson. But we call him Pattinson because he's the new Batman in the movie The Batman, which is probably delayed because of coronavirus. Uh, he has a birthday. Jeez, he's young. 1986. Lena Dunham was also born in 1986. Candace King was born in 1987. And Hunter Parrish from Weeds was born in 1987 as well. Debbie Ryan, I do not know who you are, but happy birthday. And then in 1994, The Crow with Brandon Lee was released. That's a movie, guys. The Crow is a good movie. I really enjoyed it. You should go watch it. I haven't watched it in a long time, but I'm pretty sure I would still enjoy it. Uh, It is a uh, sad story, though, because Brandon Lee passed away on the set of that movie. Also, movies are things that used to be released in theaters. Theaters are places where people would go watch movies where there was a giant screen in front of you years ago. Actually, earlier this year. I did it earlier this year. Just, you know, right before March, actually. Sometime in February. Uh, Let's see. We have the final episode of Frasier airing in 2004 where 33 million watched it. I was not one of those. 33 million. Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell and Robert Duvall was released in 2005. Now I'm believing that $2 is just putting these things in there to make me go oh movies are things that used to exist because who cares about kicking and screaming two dollars who cares uh and then uh the show wayward pines with matt Dillon first aired in 2015 again is he just a slow news day and then uh margot kidder died at the age of 69 in 2018 wow i didn't even know she passed away uh margot kidder the original lois lane And I can't think of anything else that she was in besides Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Margot Kidder, sorry that you passed away, and I'm sorry that I can only remember you as Lois Lane. Also, in 2019, Doris Day died at the age of 97. Doris Day, that is the grandmother of Morris Day. And Morris Day in the time probably did a tribute to her at her funeral which would have been awesome. Actually, now that I think about it, I didn't know I'm, I'm making jokes here about Doris and Morris being related, uh, but wouldn't that be great, like when she was alive, to see Doris Day performing with Morris Day, the Doris and Morris tour? Come on, that would have been a great idea. Here I am, making ideas after, long after people passed. All right, let's continue on to some news. So, Gendy Tartakowski... I'm gonna. I'm butchering that. Uh, he's he made like the original Clone Wars, and uh, he's worked on movies like Hotel Transylvania, and he's been on shows like Samurai Jack. He's an animator. Uh, he has was been working on a Popeye movie like with Sony uh, back in like 2010. They were talking about it. It was gonna be the uh, the Hotel Transylvania type of CG um, characters and stuff. But now uh, it seems that like that is not happening i mean it's 2020 now and now it seems that uh they have moved on to a uh, king features i don't know what king features is but they're going to 
Tark Tarkovsky and King Pictures are going to try and move forward with a new Popeye movie because the only person that really wants a Popeye movie is Dave Coulier so he can do his <laughs> noise that he used to do on Full House. <laughs> that noise. Anyway, continuing on, Reese Witherspoon has signed up to star into two romantic comedies for Netflix. There's one of them called Your Place or Mine, which will be the debut of the directorial debut of the Darrow Devil Wears Prada screenwriter Elaine Brosh McKenna. The movie will focus on two best friends who change each other's lives when he volunteers to keep an eye on her teenage son while she pursues a long, lifelong dream. Uh, Jason Bateman is going to co-star in it. I believe. Maybe he's producing. I'm not sure. And the second one is uh, the best-selling selling novel, The Cactus, by Sarah Haywood. Um, this one, I don't know if I have a premise for it. And I bet none of us really care. Oh, she's a 45-year-old woman who unexpectedly becomes pregnant, which forces her to rethink the structured life she has created for herself and begins an unconventional journey toward love, family, and self-acceptance. Yep, I guarantee you not one of us wants to watch that. Uh, also, we have learned that disaster porn extraordinaire Roland Emmerich, who's made movies like Independence Day, Godzilla, and The Day After Tomorrow, is making a new action thriller called Moonfall, which is about the moon falling to Earth. And the first person who's been cast in this is Josh Gad. All right. Josh Gad. Uh, he's going to be playing a character named Casey Houseman, an eccentric genius who figures out that the moon has fallen out of orbit and is on a collision course with Earth. He's sent into space along with a plucky team of misfits to try and land on the moon and somehow stop it from wiping out the human race. Sounds good. I'll watch it. I've watched all of Roland Emmerich's disaster porn. Looks like Robert Downey Jr. is on his way over to Netflix where they're going to do an adaptation of DC Comics Sweet Tooth, which is something I don't know anything about. Um, his, uh, he's doing this with his uh, Teen Downey production company. Uh, and it looks like the cast is going to have Will Forte, uh, some child actor I've never heard of, someone else I've never heard of, and someone else I've never heard of, and James Brolin. That's right, Josh Brolin's father is going to be on there. I believe I got that correct. Um, it seems like, let's see, it says that Gus is a half deer, half boy, and while he's happy at home in the forest, he must leave his home to help save the outside world from a terrible apocalyptic event. Can he join a ragtag crew of characters, some of whom are also human-animal hybrids, save the world and figure out his identity in the process? Okay, I'm in. Family entertainment sounds fun. And I talked about uh, CW picking up Swamp Thing yesterday. I also have heard that CW has picked up the Kung Fu reboot and a show called The Republic of Sarah. Uh, Kung Fu is going to have Olivia Leon, Lang, Lang as a Chinese-American woman who drops out of college to go on a life-changing journey to become, to an isolated monastery in China. But when she returns to find her hometown overrun with crime and corruption, she uses her martial arts skills and Shaolin values to protect her community and bring criminals to justice. All while searching for the assassin who killed the Shaolin mentor and now targeting and is now targeting her. Meanwhile, the Republic of Sarah stars Stella Baker as a rebellious high school teacher named Sarah Cooper. Faced with the destruction of her town at the hands of the greedy mining company, Sarah utilizes an obscure cartographical loophole to declare independence. Now Sarah must lead a group of misfits as they attempt to start their own country from scratch. Okay. The Republic of Sarah. That makes sense now. And then they also have uh, shows, they're doing the Walker, Texas Ranger reboot called Walker with uh, Supernatural's Jared Padalecki 
and the Supergirl spinoff, Superman and Lois. And all of these shows are supposed to be coming out this fall, but who knows when they will be able to start doing the filming for this stuff. So we'll look forward to that on CW sometime in the 20s. And the last thing I saw, it was something that really excited me because I, I thought there was going to be a Fringe reboot. Uh, the executive producer, Akiva Av- Goldsman, Agava, whatever, A-K-I-V-A, Akiva Goldsman, uh, said that he, and he uh, was the, they were talking about this, um, making a reboot to it. It turns out that they're just floating ideas. They're like, they would like it to happen, but they don't know if it's going to happen. They probably won't happen. Who knows if it'll happen? Ah, it's got to be a perfect freaking storm i liked fringe i thought a uh, first season i was like oh it's monster of the week and it was kind of getting old and then all of a sudden at the end of the first season they they uh did the whole multiverse thing and i was like what and it just blew the show out of proportions um it had a weird final season but the rest of it was was stellar i it had a uh, Anna Torb, Joshua Jackson, and John Noble in it, and uh, a bunch of other castmates, and those three were just great. I, I really enjoyed the whole show, and I really hope to see more of it, and I got excited when I saw a Fringe reboot as a headline, and then it says that they're not sure it's going to happen. And they just made an article because of COVID-19 and there's nothing else happening in the world to make real news. And that angers me. But not as much as everybody else angers me. But one person doesn't anger me, and that is $2, my friend. Thank you for being my friend, $2. And for everyone else who's been listening, stay safe, wash your hands. Happy birthday, B. Arthur. Happy birthday.